it's a really cool idea to make as many, um, not make, cook as many beans as you can through the week and have them on tap. So I've got some white beans and some red beans here. And yeah, just cook them and have them in the fridge. That's kind of what I do. You're gonna need a pan, clearly. I'm gonna put mine on low so it heats up so I don't have to wait for that to heat up when I'm ready. And what I wanna do is chop up this glory. So I've got some onions and some garlic. that aside. You know, when they say one clove of garlic, I usually normally go with double that. So I've got, I think I'll go with four cloves today. Come on, come on. Get off there. Jesus, it's a bit tough. Um, yeah, you just want to chop it up really, really finely if you can. Actually, no, don't do that. That's a pain in the ass. Just chop it up however you want to chop it up, really. Because um, we're going to mush it up in the food processor. I just forgot that then. Okay, so that's done. I've got quite a lot of spring onion here, but they're so little, you know, and they add such a gorgeous flavour. So maybe I'll just use, so this is equivalent to a spring onion back home, probably two spring onions, right? Just cut the roots off that. Now see how I just did that? If you have any of my cooking classes, this is what we're doing all day long as I'm showing you the little tricks of how to nail plant-based cooking with ease and flow and no dieting or stress or bullshit added to it. I want a lot of parsley because parsley is going to create that freshness in this dish. So now I've got my components ready, which is super important. So if you're at home, best thing you can do is do exactly what I've done. Have everything ready to go. Food processors there, beans is there. I need miso and I need mustard and my pan is on. And that's when you kind of go, woof. <sighs> now I'm ready to cook. Because if it's all scattered and all over the place, your dish is going to be wrecked. Because I've done it before a thousand times. So what we want to do is caramelise those onions as much as we can without burning them. And, um, you know, just don't burn them really. So the onions and the garlic. So I'm going to add a splash of olive oil into my pan, goes my onions, salt, pepper, wooden spoon, high heat, come on baby cook, I want these to do its thing. And caramelising means, well not really caramelising, sweating down, what I'm trying to do here is pull out the natural sugars out of this glory and then what happens? Um, they become brown. So it's the sugars that make it go brown. <coughs> Jesus. That's a bit intense. I think I'm going to have to open the door. Bloody hell. Not every onion is made equal. Some have really potent, <laughs> so potent like this one. Jesus, it's intense. While that's cooking, um... I know I've got my miso, my mustard, everything's here. I'm just going to chill, basically, while this is cooking. Woo! Without my eyes being sweated off. Whoa! Ruben's on, on the table. <laughs> That's how we roll. That's strong, dude. Come on, cook your bass, it's cooked. Okay, you good? Yeah. All right, I'm just hanging out here, hanging out here. Okay, so you can see that's not burnt, but it's kind of cooked down because of the um, sugars and the onions. Beans inside. 
Just gonna add our spring onions and our parsley. Gonna add some of our miso paste. Good couple of tablespoons, you know. Why? Why not? Miso paste is a great stock. Like it's a great freaking situation. It creates so much flavour. Nothing's burning. Nothing's sticking. Keep things moving. Jesus, I hope this works, mate. <laughs> <laughs> It's kind of like, what are we going to make today? You know? And this is the thing with um, cooking, right? Especially me. I've got no idea what's going to happen today. We just wing it every time. A little bit of mustard on there. Mix that through, turn that off. Bring it over to here. Chuck it into here. Try and get it in there actually, Cynthia. Get all that goodness off the bottom there. Have a little taste. Hmm, what do we need? So I want like a, I want like a pate kind of dippy thing that I can smear on a cracker and have in the fridge, you know, in a, on wrap bread, um, a condiment, on the table, I just I just want it there. You can process this down to the smoothest texture you like, or you can have it really, really chunky. Uh, I'm gonna go in between, I think. And you wanna taste this as you're blending as well, so you know where you're at. You know? All right. Stopping and starting. Have a look at it. It kind of looks like that pate kind of situation, doesn't it? Only a few seconds here and there. Still really hot. Very quick. Now I'm going to put this into a container. I'm going to let it sit for at least 10, 15 minutes. And then I'm going to taste it again to see where it's at in flavour. Mm. Oh, last me, do you have a container? One of those glass ones would be great. God, it's actually not too bad. Maybe because it's hot. Things just change when they're cooked and then settle. Mm. All right, I'm going to put this in the container. Thank you, my friend. Thanks, mate. Thinking of all the ways I can use this as well. Like. Now, to stop it from getting dry, just gonna make it even. I don't want a skin to form on there, by the way. Get out of the way. I'm gonna get some olive oil and just drizzle that on there, just so it keeps it a little bit moist. And I'm also gonna put some of those spring onions on there as well. Because I have them and they're here in front of me. for flavour. I'm going to sit that 15-20 minutes. I'm going to come back to it, have another taste, see where it's at and have it with some crackers. This has <laughs> evolved. That's the word I was after. I've got these crackers. Have a look at one of my other videos, YouTube videos on um, crackers and you'll see this glory. So this is like a 
a bean pate as such, right? I know, right? And this bean dip, I tell you what, it is settled in beautifully and it looks like um, like a the liver of an animal pate, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh man, this is awesome. I've just been nibbling on it, to be honest, and it's very nice. There you go, Ruben, try that. You'll be, you'll be shocked. That's great, and I totally recommend drizzling the oil, the drizzling the oil on the top to keep it moist. I really do, and putting the spring onions on there. And I think every time you get into it, I would put another bit of oil on there to be honest, just to keep it nice and moist. This is beautiful, easy. Think of a thousand million ways what you could do with it, and let me know. Mmm. Okay, that's it. <laughs> it's good, huh? it's almost meaty, yeah? Mm -hmm. Imagine I put that sulfur salt in there. Nah, that wouldn't work. Jeez, it's bloody damn good. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. Done. Going in the fridge for later when her visitors come over which everybody knows that I'm filming and cooking today and they'll be all over here, trust me. A little bit more oil on the parts that I used. Make sure it goes all around it. So it doesn't dry and leave a skin. Take that little bit, thanks. And I think I want to put more spring onions on there. Oh, it's really good. All right, all right. Now, must completely cool down, which it has before you go putting lids on things because if you do that when it's still warm, it's gonna sweat, create moisture and it's gonna go off. So, setting aside, leaving it um, and then storing it in the fridge. And I reckon you get five days out of that. Yep. On toast with spinach. Oh yeah, hi, hi.